in 1970, a Western film starring Shirley MacLaine and Clint Eastwood hit the big screen. The title of that film was Two Mules for Sister Sarah. It was directed by Don Siegel, who was a favorite director of Clint Eastwood and a good friend of his. The plot of the story follows an American mercenary who gets mixed up with a nun and then aids a group of rebels during the puppet reign of Emperor Maximilian in Mexico. The film uses both American and Mexican actors. There are a lot of Mexicans that were used in this film because it was so much cheaper to use them than it was to hire American actors to portray the Mexican common people. And you can just tell when you watch the film that these are not trained actors. They're just filling a spot. They're showing up as townspeople. The film was shot entirely in Mexico. There may have been some work that was done in Hollywood, but a good portion of the movie was filmed in Mexico, both for exterior and interior shots. Now, Bud Boticher, a longtime resident of Mexico, was renowned for his work on westerns, that involved Randolph Scott, and he wrote the original 1967 screenplay that was actually purchased, but he was supposed to direct it. When he was writing the screenplay, he initially had in mind Robert Mitchum and Deborah Kerr for the title roles. Now, the film was shot over about a 65-day period in Mexico, and the cost of it was about $4 million. One of the things that was kind of devastating to the cast and crew, and this included Shirley MacLaine, they were stricken with some terrible illnesses while they were filming the movie. And this was all really based on the food and water that they were supplied in Mexico. Bruce Surtees was a camera operator on the film, and he acted sort of as a go-between between the director and cinematographer Gabriel Figueroa. And this led to him working on Siegel's next film with Clint Eastwood, which was The Beguiled. It said while they were shooting the film, Clint Eastwood actually killed a rattlesnake for the scene in the film. And this was because the Mexican authorities didn't want it released in the area after filming was over. Eastwood said that he didn't want to kill it because he was opposed to killing any animals. Now, initially, when Clint Eastwood was delving into this script, and during the same time that he was in Austria filming Where Eagles Dare, he approached Elizabeth Taylor, who was Richard Burton's wife at the time, and he had the notion of starring with her in this movie. The only problem was that Universal Pictures couldn't strike a deal with her. She was too expensive. They just did not want somebody that was that high dollar. But now Shirley MacLaine was pretty high dollar too. And a matter of fact, she gets top billing in the film. She was over Clint Eastwood in both the opening and the closing credits. And this is something that just never happens with Clint Eastwood. And he never has a strong leading lady or an A-list star that he works with. The only other time that I recall that happening was when he was in Bridges of Madison County. And in that movie, he starred with Meryl Streep. Now, since the movie was filmed in Mexico, it took a substantial time to send the film to California for processing and return it back for the dailies to be viewed. And when Shirley MacLaine finally saw the dailies, she was just appalled at how overstated her false eyelashes looked. As you know, she was playing a hooker that was posing as a nun. She really regretted the fact that she could not remove them for the rest of the filming because the footages wouldn't match up. So she had to wear them through the entire movie. And it is pretty obvious. I noticed that and I thought she doesn't look like a nun at all. She has too much of a high fashion look to be a nun. Now Don Siegel, the director, has said that they had to make special arrangements for Shirley MacLaine because her skin just didn't fit in with the sun down there. She is really light-skinned, and the production crew had to hire 
a female Mexican assistant to stay close to her during the entire filming. This assistant kept an umbrella protecting her from the sun. Now, the title of the movie is actually a pun. Sarah's initial transportation is a mule, and that mule becomes lame, and she ends up trading this mule in for a younger, smaller donkey, which is technically not a mule. It's almost funny to watch her get on this little burrow, and then she constantly taps him on the butt to make him go but she looks especially oversized for this poor animal. So if the truth be known, the second mule of the title may actually be Hogan, who's played by Clint Eastwood. Sarah actually calls him a mule a couple of times in the movie. She tells him that you're stubborn as a mule, and later she calls him Mr. Mule. Clint Eastwood, in his role as Hogan, has on the same gun belt and holster as he did with the man with no name, worn in the Dollars trilogy, those spaghetti westerns that were directed by Sergio Leone. Now, during a question and answer for Turner Classic Movies during a film fest, Shirley MacLaine was asked about Clint Eastwood, and her response was that he was brilliant and funny. She said that she adored him. She also states that when they were doing the movie, His horse started acting up one day, and he got off the horse, looked at the horse straight in the eye, and then socked him. Now, I don't know if that's actually true or if she's just trying to make a point about him being a true Republican. But her love for Clint Eastwood wasn't so great while they were filming this show. She got along with him fine, but Don Siegel had a real affinity for Clint Eastwood. And Shirley MacLaine and Don Siegel did not get along at all during this film. They fought all the time. It's said that the director and Eastwood felt completely intimidated on the set by Shirley MacLaine. They said she was hard to get any real warmth out of her. At least that's the way her personality was. They called her very unfeminine, that she had too much balls, She would say what she thought. She was very, very hard-nosed on this film. They did make it through the film just fine, and their chemistry is actually pretty good, and their roles are played perfectly. The writer of the screenplay expressed his disgust with Shirley MacLaine's body character. He didn't think she resembled a nun at all, and although he was friends with both Eastwood and the director, Don Siegel. Siegel knew the complete disgust he had with the final film. He actually jumped on the director and asked him how in the world he could make such an awful film. They argued about it. Siegel thought it was a fine representation of his work. And I do too. I think it's a great movie. But the writer had no clue how Siegel could actually release a picture like this. The film returned $4.7 million in the North American market, and that was a modestly profitable film for that time. Two Mules for Sister Sarah received pretty favorable reviews from most people. Most people said that it wasn't a great movie, but that it was a good movie. And I feel the same way. I enjoyed it. I had no trouble following it. I thought the interaction between the two main characters was just excellent. It's definitely worth your watch if you've never seen it. Or if you haven't seen it in a while, take a look at it again. You can find it on Amazon. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.